carrying out urgent checks. The schools minister revealed that the collapse of a beam which had previously been considered safe sparked an urgent rethink of whether structures made with aerated concrete could stay open. The government says it will cover the cost to schools, but it's been accused of acting too slowly over a problem known about for years. Here's our political correspondent, Carl Dinan. This is not how staff at Willowbrook Mead Primary thought they'd spend the end of the first week of term, moving classroom and office equipment out of buildings which have suddenly been declared unsafe. Kingsdown Special School in South End has also been told to remain closed after the holidays, leaving parents in the lurch. I don't know what I'm going to do, I don't know where I'm going to go, so it's, I mean, thankfully the school have been fantastic, but it's just, I, it just makes you angry that they've known about this since June. I don't get why they've done it now. It doesn't make sense. 104 schools in England were told yesterday they would have to close in part or in full. The government had received new information suggesting that rack, a type of concrete in their buildings, could collapse even if it appeared safe. It's possible more could close. This is a continuing process. There are some still to do. How many schools? Well, there's, there's still some to do. And when we get that information, uh, we send in surveyors and uh, they conduct this. I mean, the, the, is it a large number? Because there will be parents out there thinking, is my school one of the ones that is still to be checked? They can be absolutely assured that the, the advice that schools have, we've been giving schools advice about RAC since 2018. 2018 is when part of a school building in Kent suddenly collapsed, mercifully at the weekend. The problem is reinforced autoclaved aerated concrete, or rack, and it's a problem that's known about. A school collapsed in Kent five years ago. They had a report from the National of, uh, Audit Office a couple of years ago. Their own officials in the Department for Education told them the situation was critical in December. They did nothing again and again, despite knowing this problem was coming. Perhaps not absolutely nothing. Another 52 schools are already doing remedial work, some of them partially closed. It was devastating. It was devastating and, and all, my whole thing, because they kept talking to me and apologising and saying the inconvenience. For me, I don't care about the inconvenience. The most important thing is that the children are safe. While a total of 156 schools in England either look for new space or prop up their ceilings, in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, the work is still being done to find out which school buildings contain rack. Carl Dinan, ITV News, Westminster. Pablo Taylor is outside one of the affected schools in Leicester. Pablo, what sort of measures are staff having to take there? Well, pupils here at Willowbrook Mead Primary School started the new term on Tuesday, but were sent home midday yesterday over safety concerns. This is one of three schools that we know of in Leicester affected by this concrete issue. Part of the building, we're told, is unaffected, but a section towards the back where key stage two pupils are taught, that's uh, years three, four, five and six, is affected. Now, uh, the school says it won't reopen until Tuesday so that arrangements can be made for housing pupils. It says that learning in the meantime will continue online. In a statement today, the trust responsible for the school said it understands the news will be concerning for everyone. It says it is doing everything it can to keep the inconvenience for families to an absolute minimum. Pablo in Leicester, thank you. The aerated concrete responsible for the safety scare was used in the construction of many public buildings during the 1960s and 1980s. And that's raising concerns about the state of many of our hospitals, courts and prisons, as our science correspondent Martin Stew reports. This was Kingsland Hospital in May, staff treating patients under ceilings supported by wooden struts. We know rack was widely used from the 60s to the 80s in the construction of many of the pillars of public life. I don't think it is easy to understand the scale. Think about public buildings, justice, police stations, fire stations, the variety of building types and locations all over the country. So what is rack? Well, it stands for reinforced, which means it has steel in it, autoclaved, which means it's heat treated, Aerated, which means it's bubbly, so it's lighter and is a good insulator. And concrete, which does exactly what it says on the tin. Now, it's less dense and as a result, it's less durable than normal concrete. Why is that a problem? Well, watch this video. On the left nearest me is modern concrete and on the right is rack. You can see as the pressure is loaded on, rack becomes crumbly 
and weaker. Now, Rack's life expectancy can be as little as 30 years, especially if it gets damp due to poorly maintained roofs. And that means some buildings constructed from the 60s to the 80s could now be at risk of collapse. Seven hospitals in England containing Rack are planned to be rebuilt. Unlike with schools, engineers say they're safe to stay open for now. But the problem could be even more widespread. Last year, 16 trusts in England flagged 34 buildings containing Rack. There's a plan for some, and we need a plan for everyone, and we need a plan for the overall kind of critical nature of the backlog across the NHS. And are you confident that plan is going fast enough? Well, I think, no, we want to see that go faster. In Wales, two hospitals have had to close areas, whilst 254 hospital buildings are under investigation in Scotland. Seven criminal courts were found to contain rack. One in Harrow has had to close. The government has put aside £15 billion, but with reviews underway of police stations, prisons and military buildings, the bill could be far larger. Martin Stew, ITV News. Our investigations correspondent Daniel Hewitt first highlighted the scale of this crisis back in March and he joins me now. Dan, as you've been reporting, schools, hospitals and other public buildings are literally crumbling. Is the government doing enough to get a grip on this? Um, well, up until now, Romley, the short answer is no. Um, let's be clear here, the danger or potential danger of RAC has not changed. What's changed is the government's policy on this. It's changed, we're told, because there's been several recent incidents where RAC has failed, where building has collapsed. I understand one of them was early, was as soon as last week. And the question is, how many buildings, how many schools need to collapse before the government does something about it? Well, the answer apparently seems to be quite a few. Its own report in December 2022, the DfE had a report internally that said rack panels can collapse at any moment and the consequences will be serious and dangerous. Let's remember here, Romley, we're talking about children going to schools liable to collapse and there's quite a few of them. There are two big questions tonight, one over quantity, one over cost. We still don't know in the end how many schools, colleges and nurseries will be affected by this. Right now it's 156. In Essex alone we've learnt now there's at least 50 schools affected. So that number could be much higher. And therefore, the cost here, as Martin just suggested, could be absolutely huge to the taxpayer. I'll give you one example. I went to a school in Sheffield in March, a primary school, where two roofs were made of rack. They're spending £650,000 to replace them. If that's repeated across these schools we're talking about, the cost will be absolutely huge. The government has spent very little time talking about this issue over the last few years. I suspect they'll be talking quite a lot about it over the next few months.